Hey, good morning everyone, Tractorman44 here. What we're going to do today, we're going to go ahead and, and slip in an air handler. It's an electric air handler. I think it's got a 13 kW heat package, a little 2.5 ton blower, something of that nature. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and set that in place and connect up the plenum adaption unit to tie into the, uh, the trunk line and also uh, set the box and then install the return air drop with the filter rack. So uh, this particular job here I did not install. Uh, it's a complete renovation project for a cousin of mine that's, that's bought a, a, a foreclosure house. So he's actually installed all the ductwork and everything and I'm just going to tie into that existing. So first order of business is going to be set the, the uh, return air plenum box in place and then pick up the furnace or the air handler and sit on top of the plenum box. It's kind of nice to have an extra hand picking up the uh, furnace put it on here but I don't have that luxury. Now what I'll do, uh, many times I'll go ahead and put Armaflex tape around here for a sealant or if not, after we attach it to it, we'll go all the way around the perimeter and seal it in place with, uh, with a polyurethane sealant, like a Vulcan product. Now that it's set in place, we just make sure everything is nice and square. Everything is squarely set perfectly. So what I'm going to do to make sure that I don't screw into the drain pan for the condensate off the coil is I'm going to remove a couple of these screws and use those screws to clip my clips onto here to hold the, the uh, furnace securely to the return air. What I'll do is I'll use a piece of drive material and cut me a uh, two and a half Three inch long piece, I guess. I like to trim it just to make it look a little more, get a little more fit and finish to it. That's just one little thing that adds a, a touch of um, a touch of finish to your project. You can back out that screw. Now I like to use this Malco punch. This is a light duty version of the old tried and true uh, Whitney punch. But I use this Malco punch to get me a, a pilot hole. Use that existing screw. Set that in place. The second screw keeps those from shifting like this. Keeps everything nice and square and plumb. Now we're going to set it under the trunk line in the approximate location it needs to rest. And we'll get our measurements, transfer our measurements from here up to there in order to make the opening in the duct to uh, connect that plenum adaption with S's and drives. Now if I would have made the entire project, I would have come up into here with a plenum T and we would have went up and then went both directions all in one fitting. But this renovation is going to require us to tap into the bottom of the trunk. Or the way that you can establish the holes on your trunk line is use either a laser level or a square, if your square is long enough. Transfer the inside of where the plenum adaption is going to be up to it. The same thing on the front. Then you use your square. Connect all the way across. That's going to be the front and the back. The fitting is going to extend all the way to the outside edge of the duct, so I don't have to locate that portion over here because the outside edge is going to be the edge of the duct. So now that you've got that established, you're probably going to want to move the furnace out of the way to cut the hole. So what I do, just because I'm lazy, is I'll mark the furnace on the floor. By marking that, that's going to give me a reference point when I move the furnace out of the way to cut the hole in the bottom of the duct and then slide it back in. It doesn't mean it's got to hit exactly, but at least it's going to be fairly close without measuring. Now this is one place where I don't mind using a magic marker because this is all nominal. Once you have that outside edge established, you can mark one inch in from that outside edge because that one inch in is what's going to be folded down at a 90 degree angle to give room for your S-slip. Again, this is all nominal. It's not 
exacting. But we also need that one inch in all the way around for the drive cleats on the outside edge. So come right over here and draw you a one inch mark here. The inside is going to be our cut line right here. We'll fold a drive here, a drive here, and just bend a 90 degree down here for the S connections. I use old broken screwdrivers, and if you notice, see how I got it sharpened on the bench grinder? I have it sharpened at an angle, and on the edge, that will allow me to use the hammer just to slice that into there. Cut them in at a 45 degree angle. You've got a S cut already, so you can put your S right onto here like that and get a nice good grip on it and fold that down. Same thing up here. We gotta bend our drive tabs on these now. Then we have our S and drive connection all the way around. I've had different people asking questions in the comments about why I don't assemble plenums, especially multiple transition plenums, like a two-way or three-way, in the shop and bring them out and install them in one piece. That's because you have to wait, I like to wait until I get back to the job to determine the easiest way for me to install it. This is a per particularly perfect example. If I would have assembled this in the shop, I would have one devil of the time fitting the entire assembled piece in place. However, I can put three sides on fairly easily. You never really know that until you get back to the job with the material and go to install it. So many times there's things on the job that actually change. We're going to do three-sided. So many times, like I said a second ago, so many times things on the job site change. You have a wide open space, you can put it all together, you know, and then come out and slip, it, slip in and no problem. You come back and guess what? There's a water heater right there now and piping and stuff that wasn't there before. Uh, there might even be a gas line. Sometimes there's a water softener, things of that nature. You just never know. So your best thing that I found is to hedge my bet. I think I'm going to stick the S on to where it's going to shift the material to the front of the furnace. We're going to bring that three-sided piece up from the back, spread out, slide up into the S, and hopefully get it set right down on top of this. I'm going to catch a screw in here right now so where it doesn't get away from me. And bear in mind one thing. Never pay attention or be concerned about what it, what it looks like when you start. It's how you end the installation that matters. So if I put a screw back there, that should hold that in place. The second screw on my side back here. Nothing's going to shift on us except for this here. We'll split, spread in and out like we want it to. This is all secure, everything is done. So now we can put our front piece on now.
back to business of squaring everything up and getting our drives down the side. I like to open up that drive tab a little bit. Go ahead and do another one on the other side, then we'll fold all these over and be done with the plenum. Just a couple more screws and uh, this thing is done. Now to get a reasonable, accurate location of how and where to cut that hole, you can take your return air fitting and place it up against, making sure that you've got the correct length of ductwork to attach this up to the main trunk line and take a magic marker. Again, I don't use these in the shop layout, but out here in the field, when it comes to uh, installing, definitely, uh, definitely a beneficial. But go ahead and go inside your duct and mark all the way around the perimeter of that opening on the return air fit. You can see I've marked the perimeter all the way around. I took another SR drive and then added an inch to it and then marked that all the way around too because we're going to actually cut on those lines then we're going to fold, because we don't want sharp edges here, we're going to fold a half inch in to stiffen it up, number one, and number two, to minimize the chance of any sharp edges at all. It doesn't really matter because, you know, your filter is going to be an inch away from it, but it's just, uh, it's just good practice to be a little bit careful when it comes to, to razor edges on pieces of sheet metal. So that's marked. Cut in a half inch. Nice smooth opening, no sharp edges, no shards, no nothing. That's the way you want to leave it. And it's sturdy. That actually minimizes the effort of the vibration of the furnace causing any uh, oil canning on the side because now that we've got reinforced, it's just going to be that much stiffer. In the old days, we would go ahead and make dovetail fittings and everything, you know, all fancy. And in a lot of cases, we would actually dovetail the furnace and curve them around, you know, the return air duct if we didn't have a return air 90. Those kind of things have kind of fallen by the wayside unless you get prefabricated return air drops. And then they a lot of times will come with the, the dovetails and stuff already fabricated. And you just cut this out and fold those dovetails over. And I still fabricate things like that too, but not on every project. It's kind of nice to have one of these extensions. If you don't have one, it really is handy. Pop your nut runner right back in here. And you'll see why, because right now I'm up against the wall here. And I won't be able to get my drill in to screw into the flanges. So I want to have that ready. Now with that in place, time for us to put the first section of the duct up and get our measurement. We're cutting the hole in the bottom of the uh, return there. With this in place now we can transfer these four points right up here to the return air trunk line, cut that off for an S and drive connection like we did the plenum, and then put the final piece in there. And that final piece, if I measure it correctly, should slide right in. 
Yes, it's going to slide right in. I've got sixteenth of an inch to spare. Multiple ways of transferring these points. You can use a, you can use a laser level. Um, I use those quite a lot. You can use a laser level, or you can use a square, or you can merely, if you've got something square, you can merely measure off of that that wall in order to transfer those uh, those measurements up. I transferred those up to the trunk line, measured around, took one inch off all the way around for the S's and the drives. Now we're going to go ahead and cut that out. With the hole now cut, we can go ahead and uh, drop these down for the S's. Put our S's on now. And just like installing the plenum in pieces, sometimes it's easier to put that last section of duct together in the same fashion. That proved to be the case right here too. Remember I said before, it doesn't matter what it looks like when you start, it's how you finish that matters. Sometimes you get in a situation where you can't quite pull the drives together by hand, so you have to use a tool called a duct stretcher. That'll slide right in, one into one side of the drive, the other in the other drive, and you just raise it together. And it'll draw the two pieces right in there. So here you have it, the most recent uh, sheet metal projects, the center line two-way transition, the return air plenum box that the furnace sets on, return air 90 degree elbow with the incorporated 16 by 20 filter rack, and of course the connecting ducts to go into the return air, fully installed. So here, there you go, that's another quick little installation. Uh, he's going to take care of everything else. All that done with just a little bit of the sheet metal adaption. So the job is in and complete. Hopefully you got to see a couple of shortcuts or a couple of things that uh, are the way that I install different things. So uh, that having been said, you know what? This is Trackman 44 and I am out of here guys.